Hey everyone, Mike from Northern Ridge Designs here again. In this video, I'll be making six barnwood tabletops finished with epoxy. These tabletops are repurposed out of 100 plus year old barnwood and are for a local brewery called Ramshackle Brewing Company in Jonesville, Michigan. They needed the extremely weathered barnwood to have a cleanable surface, yet still fit with their ramshackled theme. So I stopped just short of a glass-like finish and left a few highs and lows. If you're wondering how to epoxy over very rough surfaces, keep watching and I hope you find this video helpful. All right, here we go, step one. I gotta clean this old barn wood up. It's pretty uneven, it's pretty weathered. I have some small pieces, some large pieces, so I'm gonna pick and choose and find the best chunks. I need to make six tabletops total, so I'm gonna speed things up. You don't need to see all the cuts, but I'm gonna stack this stuff under weight. I'm a little concerned about the old barn wood twisting on me after I, after I made the, the cuts and the weight should take care of that. I've got some three quarter inch plywood here. This is gonna be the backer. This is on the underside of the, of the tabletops. It's gonna have a nice solid base for the legs to attach to. Um, kind of debated a lot about how much overhang to leave. The, the barn wood was a little flimsy, but I think I ended up making the right decision, leaving about two inches all the way around with the plywood underneath. It really made things pretty solid. So here I'm just using some black matte spray paint kind of seal up the bottoms um, also to make it a little visually visually a little more appealing uh, you're not really going to see the bottom I did sand it very smooth so it will at least feel nice if a customer runs their hand underneath now I'm kind of planning out where the backer board's going to go again I, like I said I ended up leaving around two inches I believe it was all the way around but I'm going to apply a liquid nail that's what I'm going to use to hold the three quarter inch plywood to the barn wood Really going to make sure I use plenty of it. I'm going to use a lot of weight. Like I said, this barn wood was pretty uneven, so I kind of figured if I put enough weight on it, it's going to smash it down and make it nice and flat. And in the end, that's really what it ended up with, although it does take a lot of weight. So here I'm kind of doing a little trial and error as to what to use to, to um, put on top of the plywood. I don't really want to dent it up and make any cuts, but I know I'm going to have to put cinder blocks on it. So I found some high-density cardboard. That actually worked out pretty well. Lots of weight. Lots of weight. I'm going to end up using batteries, tractor tires, just pretty much, or tractor weights, pretty much anything. Tractor tire probably would have worked too, but uh, tractor weights, so just about anything I get my hands on. I could only do three at a time because I didn't have enough weight in the shop. So here we go, getting the second board around. Notice I'm not making any circles with the liquid nail. It's always kind of a concern is that if you if you make circles and you get too much of a seal, you actually have an air pocket there. So made sure I didn't enclose any of the, the liquid seal beads. And here's what it looked like once I got all my weight stacked down there. See, I got like four cinder blocks there. It did actually flatten things out quite a bit. You can still see though, it is kind of uneven though, which the epoxy, that's kind of the point of this video, the epoxy is going to take care of a lot of that. So here we got the batteries. Okay, so I've taken the weight off. This is kind of the finished product. Kind of see what we have to work with here. Uh, some pretty big checks there in the weathering. Gonna have to put tape along the edge to kind of help seal in the, the epoxy. Here we got some nail holes. I mean, it's beautiful barn wood, it's beautiful wood, and it's, it's great that we're finding a purpose for it here. I was able to leave a couple nail heads. Sorry about the camera footage. It's my wife chewed me out for this. She said I was screwing up the range of focus or, or some particular camera term, but uh, kind of new to the filming world, so bear with me here. Uh, as you can see, there was a large knot on the side of this board that's going to get filled. I'm using copper um, metallic powder as well as some red metallic powder. I tried using green and I really didn't like how it looked, as, as we'll see here in a little bit. So we're going to fix that up, but right now i'm just prepping and prep work is hugely important for any kind of epoxy work 
All right, so I'm using stone coat, countertop, quick coat epoxy to fill these holes and voids. As you can see, it was kind of amber colored. It been left out into the uh, the sunlight a little bit, and it does not affect it whatsoever, the, the strength of the epoxy. Plus, I knew I was adding colorant, so it really wasn't going to matter. Here's that green I was talking about, trying out some different colors, and just really wasn't happy with how that looked with the barn wood. So I ended up routering that out and mixing in some copper, and it ended up looking kind of like an aged copper, oxidized copper. This is some thickener product just to help uh, make sure it doesn't run out of the holes too, too fast, that powder that you saw me adding. Try to use a still hand, not slop the epoxy all over the place. Here we go, I'm adding that copper to the green. Some of it got covered up, some of it you could see the green through, and it really ended up looking neat. So after talking to the client, Ramshackle Brewery, they didn't want epoxy right on top of the barnwood because I showed them a sample, and it just made the barnwood way too dark. So what I'm actually doing here is painting on a couple layers of spar urethane helmsman and it seals it helps to seal up the wood but it darkens it a little bit but not as much as the epoxy and whatever darkness it's at after the spar urethane that's what it's going to be even after i add the epoxy because the spar urethane has done the sealing it's a little tough to kind of get it into those little nooks and crannies plus this stuff is super dry so it is sucking up a lot of this a lot of this product Ended up using quite a bit more than I thought I was going to. So I'm just kind of really slopping it in there, but I'm making sure I don't leave too much pooled in the little cracks. I want to have all those little nooks and crannies for the epoxy to adhere to. So this is what it looks like. Spar urethane right over the, the, the epoxy uh, copper and the little fillers. I am going to sand that down before I apply my first coat of epoxy. I also lightly sand this spar urethane as well. Took my time, folded up some sandpaper, and got in between some of those cracks to help with the mechanical bond between the epoxy and this newly sealed surface. Here's the last two boards. And again, I apologize for the camera work, but here you're kind of getting an idea of just how deep those checks are. So we're gonna fast forward here. And this is my first coat of epoxy. I poured it on and I used a paintbrush to move it around, move it into the cracks, move it where I wanted it. I know it's not going to be anywhere near, near perfectly flat, but I know I'm going to do a couple of these seal coats to help build up the epoxy levels and flatten everything out. I apologize for not putting in the footage of me pouring the first coat, but... That's really not what this video is about, and I have a couple other videos you can check out if you're wondering how I do the seal coat process. So here I've sanded that first seal coat. I made sure I sanded the little colored epoxy areas as well. They clouded up, but once I add the next layer of epoxy, all those little scratches disappear. And those scratches are important for creating that mechanical bond between your different layers of epoxy. So I've added some tape to the edges where I have some really bad weathering and some checking, and that's going to help build that up instead of the epoxy just kind of pouring over the edge. Okay, mixing up some epoxy for our second seal coat. Uh, I figured about one ounce per square foot. Might have had a little extra just because I knew that I was dealing with a lot of little nooks and crannies that needed to be filled. So I'm just going to use the paintbrush again to move that around. Here's kind of a better look at it. Where the high spots are, I really wanted to move the epoxy off of that. I didn't need to build up any epoxy. I needed to move it into where the low spots were, mainly around where the tape is at the edge. So we ended up with a smoother surface. The end goal here, as I mentioned in the beginning in the intro, is that we're trying to get to a cleanable surface but still look a little uneven, a little rustic, a little ramshackled, which is the name of the brewery. I think we ended up pulling that off in the end. So just using my brush to work it in towards the edge. I don't want to pull it on too thick. Don't forget the edges, making sure to brush it in, cutting down those drip marks.
you can see there's quite a few bubbles um, in the epoxy itself. Once it spreads out, the bubbles become less noticeable, but I am torching uh, using a propane torch three or four times for each layer just to make sure I get all those bubbles out before I move on to the next one, before I let it cure and move on to the next layer. We'll be able to see the uh, how the torch works here a little bit later in the video. So this is after the second layer of epoxy. You can see the highs and lows, kind of where it pooled, where it didn't. Um, that's all fine. I haven't done my final flood coat yet. You can see that things are starting to even out much better on the edges. A lot of the weathering has been filled in. And I'm going to get ready for my final flood coat here. So if I didn't take the time to do the seal coats and to seal up those uh, large checks, then whatever I did for my final flood coat just would not end up very well. All right, so this is the flood coat. I'm using three ounces of stone coat countertop epoxy per square foot. I ended up having a little extra. I scraped that off into a bucket, which was fine because I knew I was going to be doing five other tabletops. I used a square notch trowel to move the epoxy around, and then I used a paintbrush to chop out those lines, making sure I don't leave any lines, because um, sometimes they will show up in the finished product if you don't use the paintbrush to chop them out. Here I'm using a propane torch to uh, get rid of the bubbles. You can watch them pop. It's really kind of a satisfying process right there. And just kind of slowly moving it back and forth. Not going to stay in one spot too long to burn the epoxy. And I'm going to do this three or four times on the final flood coat just to make sure I do get all those bubbles out. And now as I'm torching, kind of a tip for you is to also be looking for any kind of bristles or perhaps a beard hair that fell into your project, making sure you get that stuff out. So here's another good look at the bubbles that we're dealing with in the final flood coat. And for the third time, I apologize for the camera work, trying to hold the camera and do my torching. But you can see the bubbles popping as we just move it or swipe it across there. And it cleans up that surface. If we didn't do the seal coats, and I have other videos on this, those bubbles would just keep reappearing. And if you have that sort of issue, it's because you've probably skipped the seal coats. Just a better look at it, getting that last bubble. You see the red popping out in this one. It's kind of a barnwood red that really ended up looking neat. And here we go, the final look at the final project. Everything's still wet at this point, but... You can see that things have leveled out pretty good. And again, I, I, as I said, I, we're not trying to get to a total glass-like finish. If I was, I would simply aggressively sand this and do one more flood coat and we would have a perfect glass-like finish. But that's not what the customer wanted. Um, and I really think this ended up fitting in perfectly with their theme. One final look here. You can see just how well things leveled out. Now this was on barnwood. You could use this process for any kind of uneven surface. And here's a look at those tabletops in the final stage here at Ramshackle Brewery in Jonesville, Michigan. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up. Check out some of the other videos. You can also check out northernridgedesigns.com. You can also check us out social media, Facebook, Instagram. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button.